There's good boys. You still have his taste, don't you? Mm, good boys. Teenage Mutant Ninja Crocodile. Sometimes people call me crazy. I bet you're wondering why I'm getting a four-foot caiman to leap towards me. Well, let's go back 24 hours. Armed with only a camera, I travel the world capturing perfect images of people and their pets. Journey with me to beautiful places as I show you real animal affection where danger and comedy collide. Learn simple photography tips to make you a better photographer. Don't just stand there, you have my camera! Crazy. My name is Jason Kenzie, and this is Life Through My Lens, The Photo Warrior Chronicles. So I'm on my way to uh, Kelowna, BC. I'm going to the airport right now. I have the honor of updating Doug Ilman's photos. He is the owner and the founder of Croc Talk. Uh, Doug is considered Canada's foremost crocodilian expert. He educates people on alligators, crocodiles, wildcats, tortoises, and much, much more. I have to be at the airport within uh, an hour. I'm running a little bit behind. Before I meet Doug at Croc Talk, it can't be all about all work and no play. Woohoo! That was so much fun. I'm uh, all broken now. Let's uh, let's go see Doug. I'm at Doug's. Uh, croc talk uh, right now and uh, hopefully he's home. Hey Doug, hey, hey, good to see you again. I'm so excited to have Jason here. Uh, this guy is so full of uh, energy. Um, he's been here before. He is just a wonderful guy. He, he's, he's so intense and, and loves animals. Uh, he loves life and uh, this, an this guy is, is, is an animal himself. And uh, to work with these animals and get good shots of these animals, you need to become the animal, and that's Jason. Okay, so I'm here with Doug Ilman, and uh, he's going to be telling me a bit about these huge creatures in the in the back here. Tell me, Doug, what what are these creatures that you have? This is uh, I'm in here with Lucy McGator. Uh, Lucy's 11 feet long and uh, around 500 pounds. She has a jaw bite of uh, around 1,500 to 2,000 pounds per square inch. So I'm always watching body signals when I'm in here. At what age did you start getting into reptiles? I actually started rescuing uh, alligators and caimans many years ago, back uh, when we were still in our home. Um, it was a hobby back then, and then we um, uh, had people coming in for the educational program that we developed um, at a very young age in, in the history of croc -talk. And we were starting to see uh, um, examples of um, um, broken legs, um, starvation, uh, freezing cold water, uh, a lot of habitat that wasn't good for the animals. And uh, people were starting to realize that these animals were dangerous. They didn't want them anymore. So they'd bring them to uh, Doug, bring, take it to Doug, and he'll take care of it. So where do you see yourself in the future with Croc Talk? Uh, in the future, we have plans to uh, develop a new facility. It'll be about 10 times bigger than this facility. Um, each pond will be about the size of this room, so a lot bigger environment for the animals, more comfort for our guests. Um, we're looking forward to that. So out of all these years that you've worked with these animals, what have you learned that we can learn from these animals? 
I think we're going to learn uh, from these animals um, their ability to um, be patient, um, their ability to understand, uh, their ability to bond with a mammal. Something uh, in the scientific community say that these animals can't um, bond with a human being. Well, emotion is a real big word. Ali McGator over here understands a number of commands. Um, this is one of the most emotional um, parts of, of my history with these animals is working with Ali McGator. I've had her since she was this big, uh, three weeks old. Um, she's 14 years old now. I'm the only mate she knows. And because I can't put these animals back in the wild because they're born in captivity, they don't have the ability to um, communicate. They lack the social skills and the big bulls will kill them. So I'm the retirement home. I want to create a stress-free environment for these animals. We do here with their warm water and their, and, their, and their diet and love and attention. But mental health is just as important to these animals as a good environment and a good diet. You notice how they, they creep closer and closer. Very slowly. Very slowly. And when they come right to the edge to strike it, because they know exactly how far they can get the length of their body. They can come out of the water within half a body length. Half a body length. At 40 miles an hour. And when they go so slow, no one even knows they're moving until it's too late. They just look like a log yeah. floating in the water. I see her come out of the water and take food gently out of my hand. These animals don't do this. So it shows us that they do have the ability to make a conscious choice. This is a very important study that we're doing here. See, it's completely focused on me. Completely focused on me. Come on over here, please. I want you to focus on me. This means focus. That means there's nothing else in the room, which is a little bit hard for her with all the lights. But come on over here, Lucy, please. Focus. Gentle. Come over here, please. It's is like it? we're having a staring contest. Come on up here, please. Gentle. Just be very slow. Good girl. Good girl. I want you to come out of the water and grab this fish. You'll be a good girl, okay? Good girl. Good girl. Up you come, please. Up you come, please. Focus. Gentle. Gentle. There you go. Hey, Lucy. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Lucy. Right on. It's amazing how these alligators live and survive in captivity. I can just imagine what it must be like for them living in the wild. I'm here in the jungles of Mexico and I'm hunting for the Mexican crocodile. This is home to both alligators and crocodiles. And I've already done the alligators. Now I'm gonna be doing the crocodiles. There's people in this jungle who live side by side with the crocodiles. And also we want to show you why they're sleeping because they're sleeping into the mango. Yeah, we want to show you right now. So I'm here in the middle of the Mexican jungles. We're on the river. What's the river? Manati. 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 And we're searching for uh, the crocodiles of Mexico. Bernardito, biggest crocodile I've ever seen. 22 feet. 22 feet is we're searching for this crocodile. They don't it's see that from the Manati. You can hear the crunching. So what what do you think that is that's crunching in the bushes? No, no, he, he got a he got a he got a cave. He got a cave. It's only a cave. Do you know what a cave is? Do you know where the cave is? Más o menos está la cueva Fernandito, así que digamos por ahí. Hey, they We're going that way. We're gonna go see it. Hopefully he's there and we can get a shot of him. Nice. Big thing. Huge. Scary. I really don't want to be here. Not just scary. <laughs> you don't want to be here. It's kind of scary. It's, well, to me it is. It's kind of scary because he's a crocodile, right? This is Charlie. Hi, right, guys. I'm Charlie. And what's your name? Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. There's another Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. Uh, this is Charlie also. And this is another Charlie. Okay, go to hey, Charlie. <laughs> George. We're in Mexico. Everybody's Charlie, man. Oh, oh. So I have to ask. Because it, you know, how did you lose your leg? With a shark? No, the crocodile attack. Did you hear that? <laughs> that is a little bit joke. <laughs> no, so what happened? Two years ago, in the front, front to the Pontoy Island, yeah. a shark, a bull shark. A bull shark? Get out of town. A bull shark? Yeah, yeah. took off the leg. 
Like two years ago. Volsa is uh, the most dangerous uh, Yeah, over here, world. yeah. Because they, they can yeah, live in fresh water yeah. and in the ocean. The bull shark, the barracudas. So he just informed me that a bull shark had taken off his leg. Are you fishing? I don't know, fishing, man, yeah. yeah. So he was fishing. And I don't change my yacht for anything in the world. Yeah. I love my yacht. And you still fish now. I'm still, still fishing. Even though you know these sharks. Yeah, yeah, of course. As we drove deeper and deeper into the jungle, looking for the 20-foot monster crocodile, I couldn't stop thinking about Charlie. Even after losing his leg to a bull shark, he continued to fish to support his family. Even though every day he was putting himself at risk, to me, Charlie is a hero. Oh, there he is. But they females, they looking for the man. Where's the other one? As you see behind me, there is a pretty big crocodile. Yeah, we can get a little closer and then. Yeah, you see get closer. Just gonna change lenses. When you're shooting photos of animals, make sure that the sun is behind you at all times. Because if the sun is in front of you, your photograph will be a silhouette. So unless that is the look you're going for, always have your light source behind you. Now I'm shooting with a 70 to 300 zoom lens. Obviously, I don't want to be on top of the crocodile. I want to shoot from a distance because I don't taste very good. Maybe a little salt, little pepper. Hey, it's all good. My ISO is at 800. My speed is 500th of a second because I'm in a boat that's rocking back and forth and it can cause my photos to blur. So, you know, by printing up my speed, my photos will be nice and crisp. These crocodiles here are different than the North American crocodiles. Uh, Not as big. Yeah, it's a little bit more. Uh, He's right there, he's right there. You see him? Oh, yes. Yeah. You see the nest have eggs. Oh, yeah. They're so mad because we're so close to the nest. Yeah. What's the name of these guys? Coco Pato. Coco Pato. Take his face. Very angry. <laughs> into this jungle pit. I'm gonna see if we can uh, find anything else uh, that I can take photos of. Either a snake or a monkey. Maybe another crocodile. <coughs> you have to be very careful here because there's lots of, lots of snakes too. Yeah, there is a lot of snakes. Another month from now, the crocodiles will be mating and will be laying eggs, so they'll be very, very aggressive. But not now. <clears throat> now, now. Now they're just looking for mates. Oh, shit. So I'm looking for the spider monkeys. Of uh, Mexico. They can be very aggressive. They can come, they can grab your camera and swing off, and sometimes they get kind of mad and they will actually throw their poop at you. So you have to be very careful. I don't see any right now, but 
I'm pretty sure that they're round. So. After a day of being out on the water photographing crocodiles, I was told of a Mayan ruin that was the tallest in South America. So I'm in real, real town Mexico, uh, none of this tourist stuff, but I'm here to eat at this uh, amazing little restaurant that I found. Uh, they serve some amazing chicken, and uh, come with me and I'll show you what it's like. Thank you. So, uh, you cannot just buy chicken here, meaning you can't just come in like a uh, supermarket and say, hey, can I get a bunch of uh, uh, chicken? You have to come and you have to eat. He just will not let you just walk out the door with them. While enjoying lunch, I was told of these caves that went deep into the Earth's crust. I had to find these caves and explore them. There was water that I could jump into and cool off. This was an adventure I could not pass up. Pick them and, or, or, or use something and take them, thinking it was mystical, like magical, or it was going to give them good luck. And in reality, they're just rocks. This is uh, the biggest Mayan ruin next to Guatemala. This stands almost 200 feet. Actually, I'm just kidding, I have no idea how high it is. But uh, you know, it sounded pretty good. How about, let's stick to 300 feet. 300 feet tall, and uh, I'm about to climb up it. especially coming back down. So it's slow and steady. And if you look over my shoulder, you can see exactly how beautiful it is. This has been one heck of an amazing uh, Mexico adventure, uh, filming crocodiles 
and uh, taking lots of photos of birds. So I've just climbed the mine ruins. I'm at the top, and I'm wondering if on the other side there's stairs going up. So I'm just gonna go and check. Hold on, let me go! <laughs> my days in Mexico are growing small, and I spend my last day playing in the sun and the surf. I dive deep into the rainbow colors of the many fish and sea life that brings me so much happiness. I'm in awe with how much life is all around me. This is my downtime, a place I can let my thoughts run wild. As I sit here relaxing on the airplane, I can't help but remember the friendships I made, the laughter, the joy, and the excitement, the adventures that I went on the sunsets. I love Mexico, but one thing I can't forget, Doug is an amazing and true to his passion towards his reptiles. Are they able to put aside their killing instincts and live with harmony among the fishermen? These are real questions, and Doug has proved that these powerful prehistoric creatures can be affectionate if raised right. Until my next adventure. My name is Jason Kenzie, and this is the Photo Warrior Chronicles.